Normally, when you find an average, or in this case, an average grade, you want to go ahead and find all their grades, 90, 80, and 85, and add them together first. And that'll give us 255. Then, to continue finding the average, you want to divide by how many things you have, 3 in this case. So dividing that value by 3, that'll give us an average of 85. However, that's a fake out here. Because we don't want to find the regular average, we want to find what's called the weighted average. That's going to take into account the different weights or the percents that are assigned to each of these grades here. So it's going to be a different method. Let's get rid of that. To find a weighted average, the first thing you want to do is multiply each value by its percent. So on labs, the student scored a 90. That counts for 30% of their grade. We want to go ahead and multiply those together. Then for their tests, they scored an 80. That counts for 50%. Multiply those two. And finally, homework 85 counts for 20%, so multiply those as well. Let's go ahead and copy that down. The last step is we're going to add these together. Just put a plus sign in between right here and one more right there. Finally, we're going to type this in the calculator just like that, and that'll calculate the correct weighted average for us. And this is the exact calculator that they'll give you. So let's go ahead and start. We've got 90 on labs. That represented 30% of our grade. To get the percent sign, just hit second left parenthesis there. And keep going. Plus, we got 80 on our tests. That represented 50%. Again, second, and then that button, get the percent, plus homework, 85, and that represented our 20%. Once we've got that typed in, just go ahead and hit enter. So 84, this is the correct weighted average grade in this class here. But remember, we got an 85 when we did the normal average. Because it's weighted heavily on tests, and we didn't do as well, that's why I pulled the grade down a little bit more to an 84 there. So that's it. That's how you can calculate any weighted average, multiply by the percent that you have, and then add all the values together. Okay, but when would you use these? Let's look at an example. Once again, we're finding a weighted average. Let's go ahead and read it. A golf club head is made from two metals combined to form an alloy. We've got titanium and aluminum, they have these different densities, and they show up with these percents. What is the weighted average density of the golf club head? Well, to find the weighted average, let's go ahead and copy down our first step. We know we want to multiply by its percent, and we're interested in the density. So we'll multiply 4.5. That shows up 90% of the time. Multiply those two. 2.7, that density shows up 10% of the time. And finally, we're just going to add these together. So once again, let's go ahead and use the calculator. Let's type it all in here. We've got 4.5. That shows up 90% of the time. And then plus 2.7. That shows up 10%. And this time, we're only adding those two together. So hitting Enter here, 4.32. Closest answer is B. So 4.3, that's the weighted average density for this golf club head. And these are based on real values, so it's interesting how you can combine the properties of two different metals. It looks like titanium mostly for its strength, and then aluminum for a little bit of its lightweight or flexible properties. Okay, and let's look at one final scenario that these show up. Weighted average also shows up on GED Science. Researchers use thallium, TL, to trace how toxic metals move and accumulate in underground water sources. Two isotopes of thallium are shown. Here are two isotopes. They have different masses, and they show up with these percents. What is the weighted average mass of thallium? But these are easy for you now, because you already know what to do. Let's go ahead and take our two masses, multiply them by those percents, and add them together with the calculator. So super easy once you've done a couple of these guys. Okay, let's clear. Let's do 202.97. 
that mass shows up 29.5% of the time and plus 204.97. That mass shows up 70.5%. Looking good. And enter 204.38. So see, that's the correct weighted average mass of thallium based on these two isotopes here. So whether you're using a weighted average for 2% like this one, 3% like this one, or any amount, it's still the same method for all of them. So once you know that two-step process, multiply by the percent, add them together, you'll be good for any weighted average here. Check out my website for practice problems just like these ones and others as well. And here's a video on percents if you want some more practice with different percentage problems. Let me know what questions you have, what else you want me to cover. Good luck, you got these. We'll see you in the next video. Toodles.